today we're going to be looking at the story To Kill a Mockingbird by Harper Lee. We're going to be focusing on characterization. Now to begin, let's talk about how the author reveals a character to his audience. Now the author may reveal a character to his audience through means of direct characterization or indirect characterization. Now you might be wondering what this is. Now direct characterization is where the author explicitly tells you outright what a character is like. Indirect characterization, the author shows you what the character is like based on their actions, their thoughts, and interaction. So for example, Jem had his little sister to think about the time I dared him to jump off the top of the house. If I got killed, what would become of you, he asked. You can find that in chapter 17. And what this basically suggests is that Jem is a very considerate person and he is very mindful of the things that he does. Another example, inside the house lived a malevolent phantom from the Radley chicken yard. Tall pecan trees shook their fruits into the schoolyard, but the nuts were untouched by the children. Radley's pecans would kill you. So that basically suggests that the children have their own perception of Mr. Radley and that they, they basically are afraid of him. Now let's focus on the major and minor characters. Now the major character or character in the story is one or two characters who usually dominate throughout the story. The minor character, however, helps the main character's tale by interacting with them and highlighting aspects of their personality. Alright, let's try to see if we could categorize a few of the characters from the story uh, To Kill a Mockingbird, whether they are major or minor characters. Alright, so we can conclude based on the dominance that Jem and Scout are major characters in the story. On the other hand, we could conclude that Calpurnia and Miss Stephanie Crawford are minor characters in the story. But where do you think that characters like Atticus, Boo Radley, and Dale would fit? Something to think about. The major characters in the story are either the protagonist or the antagonist. The protagonist is the main character in the work, but not necessarily the hero. The main characters are not always the heroes in the story. On the other hand, the antagonist is the opponent or the enemy of the protagonist, and the antagonist often causes the central conflict in the story. Now let's redirect our attention to dynamic and static characters. A dynamic character is a character who undergoes significant changes throughout the story, while a static character does not undergo any changes throughout the story. Alright, so now let's look at some of the characters in the story. We're going to be providing evidence of direct and indirect characterization for each of them. We're going to start with Scout, whose full name is Jean Louise Finch. She is the narrator of the story, as you can tell. She is six years old when the story begins, and she is naturally curious about life. Scout is described to be a smart girl, as she can already read even before starting school. She is confident and she acts out of good intention. She's also a tomboy and she dresses boyishly. She knows how to fight and is directly described as crazy. Scout is also talkative and she's straightforward as her dad and she did not hesitate to tell Miss Caroline, her first grade teacher, what kind of people the Cunninghams were. On page 15, on page 15 of the novel, we see where Scout is described to be a smart girl as the author 
mentions that she is smart as she can already read and she is curious and longing to go to school. Jem, on the other hand, who happens to be Scout's older brother, is described as being a sensitive person. He's very generous and he can be temperamental at times, but he's very mature and protective and he's also humble. And his closest friend, as we know, is Charles Baker Harris, who he affectionately refers to as Dill. At, at the beginning of the story, um, we see where it is mentioned that Jem broke his arm when he was almost 13 years old. His greatest fear having that happen was that he would not be able to play football anymore, which he had a great love for. And he also liked uh, playing football with his dad. Jim idolizes his father and he tries his utmost best to make sure that he is walking in Atticus's footsteps. Jem is directly characterized as having brown hair. Um, he's not very tall and he's described to be a thin person. All right, let's look at Miss Maudie and we're also going to look at Calpurnia. These are two minor characters in the story. Um, so Miss Maudie is a pleasant, open-minded woman who loves the outdoor and she also loves children. Unlike Arthur Boo Bradley, Miss Maudie would allow the children to play in her yard. Not only that, she would also allow the children to eat from her garden. Contradictory to Boo Bradley because the children wouldn't even eat the pecan nuts that would fall from the pecan trees in his yard over to the schoolyard. We also know that she is almost the same age as Atticus's younger brother and is described in the novel as a neat lady. All right, now let's look at Calpurnia. Calpurnia, as we know, is the children's uh, caretaker. She is tall, but slender. She is an older African-American woman who is very strict. She's very demanding, uh, but she's very unsentimental. We know that she has a son named Zebo, and Calpurnia is nearsighted. Her hands were also described to be wide, but they were hard which could um, indirectly um, suggest that Calpurnia is a very hard working woman, um, which resulted in her having hard hands. And now to Jem's friend, Jem's closest friend, Charles Baker Harris, otherwise known as Dill. So Dill is described as a small boy who has blue eyes, and he has snow white hair. He has an active imagination and is quite confident and curious. And we know that his aunt is Miss Rachel. We know that Dale makes up a lot of lies. Um, he specifically lied about seeing his father um, after, after returning from Meridian um, at the end of term which is where he actually goes to school instead of Macon. Dale mentions that he had seen his father and that his father was so we can find that in chapter four where Dale Dale describes his father as being or or Scout describes Dale's father based on what Dale would have told them that his father was taller than their father and that he had a black pointed beard and that he was also the president of the L and N Railroad which we know is all a lie because um, Dale doesn't know his father and 
that he's only admitting to this because he feels embarrassed by the fact that, or left out by the fact that he does not know um, his biological father. And now on to Atticus Finch. Alright, we know that Atticus is a lawyer. He's described as a tall man who wears glasses and is partially blind in the left eye. You can also um, find that in that in chapter 10, Atticus was described as a feeble man, even though he was just nearly 50. We know that Atticus is brave because he shoots a rabid dog. In addition to that, we also know that Atticus is a humble man. We could conclude that Atticus is humble based on the fact that he refused to tell his children about his rare talent. Um, so that, that confirms that Atticus is very humble. Um, we also know that he's a very civilized individual who does not find the idea of killing animals appealing and that is an indirect characterization for Atticus Finch. Atticus is a good father but he is a widow. The story tells us that Atticus lost his wife to heart attack and we know that he has a sister, Alexandria, and a brother, John Hill, otherwise known as Jack, and we also know that Atticus has a nephew, um, his name is Francis Hancock, and he is the son of Alexandra. Now let's look at Arthur Bradley. Now, is described as a tall, ugly looking man who is also very savage. The children are very afraid of Bo Radley. Jem gave a reasonable description of Bo. Bo was about six and a half feet tall. Judging from his tracks, he dined on raw squirrels and cats he could catch. That's why his hands were bloodstained. If you ate an animal raw, you could never wash the blood off. Scout describes Bo Radley initially as a malevolent phantom because he is credited with acts of vandalism committed in the night. Superstitions about him exist. He has a mysterious history that leads to his reclusive life and German scout never seen him. They, they've never seen him before. So everything that they're basically saying about Bo Radley is dependent on what they would have heard about him. So this is basically their um, superstition based on what they heard about him. However, in chapter 29, the reader is treated with the correct description of how Bo Radley looks. We know that his face is, is white and we also know that Bo Radley has a mark across his face. Walter Cunningham is a poor boy and he is Scott's class. He can be indirectly described as being poor um, because we see where it's mentioned that he doesn't have shoes for school um, and he ended up having bookworms from feeding the pigs while not wearing wearing any. In addition to that, we could also um, conclude that Walter is poor based on the fact that Miss Caroline had to be the one who gave him money so that he could have lunch. However, even though we know that Walter Cunningham is poor, we could indirectly conclude that he is a, a very honest boy. It is noted um, in the book that um, the Cunninghams never took anything they can't pay back. 
no church baskets or no script stamps. They never took anything of anybody. They get along on what they have. They don't have much, but they get along on it. That's an excerpt from chapter 2 of the book. Mr. Cunningham is the father of Walter Cunningham. Um, as mentioned before, they are poor farmers. Um, we see that they are mentioned to be pig farmers, but nevertheless, as mentioned earlier, they are honest people. They are very hardworking. And Mr. Cunningham is a loyal friend, and we could indirectly conclude that he's loyal because he tries to lynch Tom Robinson with a mob when he was actually um, put away in jail until his trial. Mayala Ewell, about 19 years old, she um, she's a poor, uneducated girl, however, like her father, and she takes care of all her siblings. We could think that Mayala may have been under tremendous pressure, especially since with the responsibility that she had to take care of her family, that she was also um, abused verbally, Mayala, however, and physically is by very dishonest, and she goes along with her dad to wrongfully accuse Tom Robinson of raping her. She's very convincing though because she managed to get Tom Robinson even after completing his duties to do additional um, jobs for him when he should have been on his way home. Now, Bob his Yule is the father of Mayela Yule. He is a racist man who is uneducated and spends most of his time getting drunk. He accuses Tom Robinson for raping his daughter and he is very dishonest and cruel as we see him um, attempting to hurt Atticus's uh, children on the night of Halloween. Miss Caroline, Scout's class one teacher, Overalls, 
she's embarrassing the Finch family for behaving like a tomboy. Remember, as we said before, that Scout dresses boyishly. Now, Atticus, on the other hand, believes that women can wear whatever they please. He doesn't enforce manners and acting ladylike as much as Aunt Alexandra does. He believes that he is raising Scout in a fine way, no matter what everyone else is telling him. He also believes that Calpurnia provides enough of a feminine influence, even though she is the black maid and isn't quite the same as her mother. Bear in mind, however, that Atticus has no problem with the fact that Calpurnia is black. Um, they're similar. Aunt Alexandra and Atticus are similar in the, um, based on the fact that they both believe in bring, bringing honor to the Finch family. They have different beliefs about what disgraces their family, but they both believe that it is important to be proud of their family name. Lastly, we are going to look at the similar characterization for Dill and Jeff. Now, both Dill and Jim are very adventurous. Um, you can find evidence of that on page 57. Um, you can also find evidence of them both being inquisitive on page 57 as well. Um, and both like to imagine things and act out stories. So you can find that between pages 8 and 9. Jim uh, Jem is different from Dale because um, looking good was important to him in front of his friends. And he wants to look brave and not look like a wimp in front of his friends. That, that, that's on page 15 and 16. So he wants to um, basically leave an impression that he is a brave person. Jem is also superstitious. Um, evidence on, of that is on page 41 and evidence of Jem being afraid of the Ridley's place you can find that, that on page 14 and 15 Dill on the other hand is very brave he is not afraid of Bo Radley and he makes up a lot of lies as we mentioned before now it is important to note that even though Jem and Scout are afraid of the Radley's place. Um, being inquisitive would have caused Jem's pants to be stuck um, in, um, tangled in the fence. But considering the the superstitions based on what Jem and Scout would have heard about the Radley's, Jem decided that he was going to return for his pants which would also suggest that Jem is actually very brave and that Jem um, knows how to take risks. Alright, let's look at a few paragraphs and analyze if these are direct or indirect characterization. Now, Dale was a curiosity. He wore blue linen shorts that buttoned to his shirt. His hair was snow white and stuck to his head like duck fluff. He was a year my senior, but I towered over him. So because that is explicitly mentioned in the story, we could um, conclude that this is actually a, an example of direct characterization for Charles Baker Harris. Now the next one says, Jem gave a reasonable description of Bo. Bo was about six and a half feet tall, judging from his tracks. He dined on raw squirrels and cats he could catch. That's why his hands were bloodstained. Now this one is a little bit different because this is basically a description or what what Jem thinks that Bo Radley looks like. So we could um say that this one is actually indirect characterization because we 
don't actually know what bull riding looks like until we get to chapter 29 of the novel and now for the last one the radley place fascinated deal in spite of our warnings and explanations it drew him as the moon draws water but drew him no nearer than the light pole on the corner a safe distance from the radley's gate so what does this there um, he would stand so just his arm around the hot pole of this could actually and be wandering. direct um the, uh, characterization because it says that still was fascinated by the Bradley's place um, but it also implies that Dill is not afraid of the Bradley's place um, regardless of what he was actually told by others as well 